If you saw my last Guardian Invitation Farming video, well, you'd know it's a pretty profitable strategy. And I needed a little bit more money to finish my recently released Penance Brand Charge Stacking Slayer build, so it was back to the Guardian Mines. But this time, I decided that I was going to make it fun if I was going to keep doing this, because after 80 maps, I was already a little bit bored of a base concept. And so I present to you the results of a more fun, in my opinion, version of Guardian Invitation Farming, this time going for Elder Slayers so there's no phased bosses, which makes the fights boom boom boom, nice and rapid fire. I also changed up the mechanics that I was using, dropping Delirium entirely because it's boring and grey, and honestly, as profitable as it was, I wasn't having that much fun with it, and instead replacing it with Expedition, which I much prefer personally. And as it turns out, Expedition's pretty darn profitable as well, so that wasn't a bad swap. And of course, a boss killer isn't much without bosses to kill, so don't worry, I'm going to be testing some of those as well, but I haven't quite finished with the sets, so you'll have to get subscribed, leave a like while you're down there, and come back for the next time when I start talking about the boss videos and break down the costs and profits. And remember that this is a small sample size of 80 maps, it's not a set of 10,000 or something where I can make objective statements. Instead, this is just what I got trying it this time. Who knows, your results might be very similar, or they might be a bit different. For now, let's get into it, starting with what I used. I opted for four sextants. Copy Beast, since it was only 12 chaos per, and the potential payout was absolutely massive. It was profitable even last time with no Krakic Camaros. Don't worry, this time we were a little luckier. Then 20 Harbinger Currency, since I'm using Destructive Play to add as many bosses to the map as possible. Therefore, having a Sextant that causes all of them to potentially drop Fracturing Shards, which are worth over a Divine each, is absolutely worth it. Gilded Scarab, since that's worked well in the past and it's really easy with Seance. And last up, Conqueror Maps. Now, do be a little careful when buying these. I paid 270 Chaos each, which gets you a set that's worth uh, quite a bit more than that, actually. However, I noticed the price varied anywhere from 270 at the low end, when the market was the most saturated, to 380 at the high end, at which point you're better off just buying the sets rather than running the sexton. So be careful of price variance here, double check it against the price of buying the sets. If it's less, you're good to go. If it's more, just buy the sets and use a different sexton. I also used three scarabs. Why three instead of four? Because I couldn't think of a fourth that was impactful and also didn't slow me down. You can throw something like strong boxes in, just keep in mind it'll take extra time. These were Polished Harbinger, two divines for 80, Polished Beastery, two divines for 80. Realistically, this could have very easily been rusted instead and you'd save yourself a divine, and three divination worth, or 80, Gilded Expedition Scarabs. Why? because with the extra density, the big booms really do pop off. Just make sure you have some sort of explodey effect, and probably a build that can deal with a lot of immunities. I could hit pretty much any immunity that I wanted and be fine, so long as the enemies weren't immune to fire, cold, and lightning simultaneously. Then last up, Essence from a map device for another two chaos. I spent a couple divines in Remnants of Corruption, and two full Elder Slayer sets, including the Invitation. Then about a divine worth of miscellaneous fees like rolling the maps, divine orbs to corrupt stuff, yada yada yada. Last time I would have called the strategy medium to low investment, where you didn't need all that much to get started and you could buy a lot of the supplies as you went. In this case, it's quite a bit higher because you really do want the conqueror map sets or the conqueror map sextants. However, if you're using the sextant, remember that is getting you all the fragments as well, so you should be able to sustain profitably, you'll just need a little bit more upfront currency. In total, I think I spent around 46 divines on everything throughout the entire time. How much did I get back? Oh, don't worry, I'll be talking about that later, stay tuned towards the end. For now, I want to talk about the ever-important Atlas passive tree that I used. So if you saw the last video, you should notice some similarities and a couple differences. First up, you want Vivid Memories, Remnants of a Past, and Conquered Conquerors. This way you get additional map drops, especially with destructive play, to help you not only sustain your maps, but make a fair amount of profit. Because I was still using the Gilded Scarab Sextant, you need Seance. Of course, I still had Harbinger on, I still had Essence, and I still had Beasts. So the Essence nodes are here, you want all of them. The Harbinger nodes are here, you want all of them if you're going to use this mechanic, 
Technically, you don't need to though, you could easily drop either Essence or Harbinger if it's not to your taste. Just keep in mind you'll need a similarly profitable mechanic, and especially in the case of Essence, it really is a lot of profit. Beasts, which turned out to be a massive amount of profit this time, absolutely 100% worth it for a minimal investment. And last up, Expedition, which as you can see, it's really just taking extreme archeology span and then also taking buried knowledge for the logbook drop chance. After that, I just went for as many chance for maps to be duplicated as I could grab with the remainder of my points. Since Essence is not on the map device, I'm still using all of the Eldritch gateways. Though, fun fact, if you didn't need to use the seventh gate, you could put all of those points into even more map duplication chance, thus increasing your profits. Now, one thing that I missed last time in my previous video was the Maven Invitation drop chance nodes. Remember how I said I was pretty unlucky and wasn't sustaining them? Yeah, it turns out because I was missing these, which is because about midway through the set, I decided for fun I'd do some uber bosses and I grabbed points and yeah, in short, if you are forgetful because there's no Atlas loadout, sometimes you can be missing important parts of your strategy. But hey, I, I did catch it when I was running this and fixed it in a pinned comment on the video. So do be sure to pay attention to that. Make sure you have these nodes if you're gonna run this. As well, it's not a significant portion of your profit, it definitely does help and each one's about a divine right now, so it makes a difference. So you might be asking, why did you choose these mechanics? Why not use something else? Honestly, it's mostly just that I like them. Essence is certainly incredibly profitable to the point where I think it's an auto-include. But as for everything else, I chose Beastery because it's easy and I only really have to pay attention to frogs and spiders. I chose Expedition because of Big Boom, I like it, and I chose Harbinger because I like it. As long as the mechanic that you're doing does not super scale off of Quant and Juicing, i.e. you wouldn't want to put Abyss in here, it's fine to run. If you prefer doing something like Delirium, you can absolutely do that. If you prefer, say, Harvest, yep, you can do that. You can probably do Legion, though I wouldn't particularly advise it. And you could even do Ultimatum. Just keep in mind that Ultimatum is going to add a lot of time to your maps. And so again, personally, I would rather run them faster. Which speaking of, it took me about seven hours to run them this time because it was about 30 seconds to a minute longer than even the Elder maps from last time. Ending up at about 20-ish minutes per set, or roughly five minutes per map. Not really counting the time for the invitations there because I only did 20 of them and they were really fast and it was under a minute, so there you go. Sometimes a load screen was actually probably more time than I spent fighting the bosses in the invitations. I did, however, time out sets and it was very consistently three sets an hour, so seven-ish hours to get all 20 sets done. There's also a little bit of a difference in how I was running the maps verse last time. First up, because the special drops such as Conqueror Exalts are tied in part to the map quantity bonuses, now you do want to roll your maps, and therefore you'll need a build that can handle fairly rippy content. Ideally, you chisel it, you alk it, you roll it to something decent, then you vol it and call it good. Though I would still make sure to roll all the invitations to really high quant, like ideally 80% plus before voling, and hope that it doesn't brick. Next up, the way you run through the map is also a little different. You don't need to pay attention to yellow beasts, just look at red beasts and look for the rarer ones. After a while, you should be able to recognize them visually, especially if you aren't playing a build that fills the screen with garbage. Then again, if you aren't playing a build that fills with the screen with garbage, uh, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Along the way, you'll want to stop for any harbingers and be sure to corrupt and kill essences as appropriate. Personally, I was never too worried about looking for ghosted monsters for Seance. Between the Red Beast and the Essences, there was almost always a ghosted enemy that I could blast and get my three Gilded Scarabs. But for Expedition, you want to put the big boom roughly in the center of the pack, set it off, clean it up, click all the chests, and you're good to move on. After that, go to the boss, kill the boss, pick up the loot, go into the portal, kill the Elder Slayer, I guess they're the Elder Slain at that point, pick up the loot again, and there you go, you've completed one map. Repeat it three more times, you'll have completed a set, go into the invitation, roll it for as much quant as possible, nuke the ball, come out, and profit. Like with before, a significant portion of the profits were the splinters used to get Maven's Ritz. However, this time, I also got quite a lot from the Beastery component, getting over 40 divines worth of just Krakic Camaros alone, since the price for those is extremely inflated as of the time this video is being recorded. But like always, the regular caveat emptor does apply. 
This is a set of 80 maps. Now, I have a pretty good feeling that this is going to be profitable, since it's profitable in almost every league. And I also have a feeling that now that I've done 160, the drops are relatively consistent. But 160 is far from a perfect sample size. You would need to run thousands or tens of thousands of maps to really be able to tell what's good and what isn't, what's uh, optimal per se. And honestly, at this point, I don't care. I made plenty of currency, and I ran the mechanics that I personally enjoyed. If I had gone with whatever's most optimal, I may have done 10 more maps and then called it quits. But instead, I did 80 because I was playing the game in a way that I found the most fun. Which, when it comes to farming strategies, is incredibly important. You're far more likely to stick to a strategy you enjoy than one you completely despise, even if one you despise is technically one or two divines more per hour. With how many divines I got back, trust me, it really wasn't worth it to do something I hated. And uh, speaking of, let's see about that tab and take a look at all the divines. So this is my dump tab. I started with two sets of these maps, so technically eight was the starting pool, and I got back 18, I also had 18 Elder Guardians and 19 Shaper Guardians. Good bit of profit just there. The Awakened Gems were unfortunately disappointing and most of them are basically vendor trash. But as you can see, I have 10 very good Krakic Camaros. Also, last time, I didn't realize that people actually bought Sakawine Rex. Uh, I didn't have very many, but I did throw a couple out. So that was probably a divine in profit that I technically missed from the last run. There are, of course, the really nice Maven's Ritz. All of these are from rolling your invitations as rippy as possible. And we've even got a couple Cortexes. Then plenty of Essences, almost no Divines. I'm pretty sure there's only like one or two Divines in here, which goes to show there's a lot of value to be found when farming, even if you don't get any raw Divine drops. But since this is a little hard to visualize, let's pull it into something that's a little easier to understand. So here we have Excellence Next, or Excellence CE, I guess, where it shows the tab's value is around 156 divines. This isn't counting the beasts, this isn't counting the logbooks, this isn't counting a lot of the stuff on the right side that doesn't get automatically picked up. But now you can see roughly what everything is worth, and you can even create filters here. For example, I could look at Essences, and here you can see all the different Essences and their values. Over a relatively small sample size like this, as I said, not thousands of maps, you're going to get this kind of variance. But it's still pretty helpful. So this is, at least in my opinion, a slightly better way to visualize it than just a list from TFT. This is also, of course, only the stuff that I was actually looking for and picking up on my filter. There's plenty of things that just didn't happen to make the cut. There's plenty of things where, I'm going to be honest, I don't actually know if all of it is worth it or not. Like, should I have picked up Council of Cats? Was it really worth the three chaos each? Probably not, but hey, I'll get to turn in a card and have fun, so I guess that's worth something. You get to take a look here. Some exalts, some warlord exalts. Got 93 chaos there each. About two, two and something divines. And if you look through at a total, it levels out at about 33.5 chaos, which is 156 divines. Then in terms of the rest, there was five blueprints, which I valued at 35 chaos each in bulk, 175c total, badge of a brotherhood, which was 100 chaos, 140c from a voidborn, 150c in random awakened gems, five forbidden tomes, which I was counting as 50c, but honestly, it's probably a lot more. I just happened to very quickly check the price, and I'm not sure for actually 10 C each because people aren't running them, or for like 40 or 50 and there are a bunch of price fixers. Couldn't be bothered to check because that amount isn't relevant to the total anyway. The Shaper Elder Conqueror maps, about 2,400 chaos total. The logbooks, about 1,300 chaos total. The beasts are, as you can see, a vast amount of a profit though. 45 divines and Camaros, assuming 4.5 div each, and then around 1,500 chaos in assorted other beasts. So about 228 divines off of 80 maps, which is almost three divines per map. Fun fact, that was about equal to the abyss juicing that I was doing near the start of a league, but it takes way less time per map and in my opinion is way more fun, so that's a win. About 46 divines in cost, 182 divines in profit or about 26 divines per hour. But depending on the speed of your build, and exactly how quickly you are as a player, there's a lot of variance there. 
so you'll just have to test a few maps for yourself. And remember, don't be discouraged if you don't get very much in your first map. And don't be too excited if you get like four Camaros in your first map. I mean, I guess be excited because that's a lot of money, but at the same time, don't expect it to happen again for a very long time. And so that was my second attempt at Guardian Invitation Rushing. I had a lot more fun this time because instead of having to deal with the timer of a delirium fog, I was instead blowing things up with Big Boom Expedition. And I just don't like timers all that much. Plus, while delirium is quite profitable, it makes everything look gray and boring and depressing. Luckily, we're in a league where making money is quite easy. I actually struggle to think of a strategy that when ran moderately efficiently makes under 10 divines an hour. So instead of focusing on the most optimal strategy or comparing multiple strategies to see what's the most efficient, I've instead been going with what I personally enjoy the most. Because honestly, if I was stuck grinding out the most efficient, I definitely would have quit the league by now. And instead I'm still playing and I have an awesome Penance Brand Charge Stacking Slayer. Which speaking of, if you want to know more about how I put that character together, I did just release a build showcase going into all the details. And it's a quite juicy one, cause there's a lot of intricate mechanics. So do be careful if you plan to make the build for yourself. But with that said, I'm curious, when it comes to money making in Path of Exile, do you go for what is optimal or what you personally find fun? And if you do go with what you personally find fun, what's your favorite method? Let me know down in the comments below. If you want to know more about the strategy or a slightly more entry-level version, then do check my previous video, or you can read more over at Maxwell GG. With that said, I'd like to take a moment to thank my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible, and you might even see your name on screen like these fine folks here. Link to support is down below. But with that said, thanks for watching. While I have definitely enjoyed the league and played a little longer than I normally do, I'm probably going to wrap it up soon and try some other games. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of games which recently released that I hadn't gotten a chance to try yet, so I'm very much looking forward to going back to them. So with that, thanks for watching to the end, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you again sometime soon.